So hello and welcome to Fun Formula. God, it has been a while. I've been away a while. I've been three weeks, three weeks. I've not done a Fun Formula. I've got no excuses really for why I've not done one. I've just been a bit busy, but I'm back and I'm ready for the spa one. Right, I've got my phone, trusty phone, trusty phone with the question. So super spa, let's get cracking. So question one, who had the best drive of the day on race day in your opinion and why? Well, surely Jensen had a great race day, you know, first pole for McLaren, one straight from pole, you know, he had a flawless race, such a flawless race that I don't think we saw any of Jensen's race, because, he, you know what, he probably could have, you know, spun off and, you know, done some pirouettes, probably signed some autographs, and we wouldn't have known because he'd have won by miles, so, to be honest, it has to be Jens, really, but I'm trying to think of anyone... I think, to be honest, I think the caterers did a good job because after the melee of the start, I think to get themselves into the places they did was pretty damn good, especially Vitaly Petrov, who we heard last week has lost a lot of his funding from the government. And I think he did a pretty damn good job because normally it's Kovalainen, but Petrov, I have to give Petrov some kudos. He did a really, really good job in that caterer. And, you know, considering the car is pretty damn poor, you know, he did really well to keep a decent place in. Question two. The first lap saw an incident which ended the race for several drivers and who do you think was to blame? Right, this is my calm bit before I go off into my rant. So, the incident. I know that Grosjean, aka Giraffe, caused that accident. I know that wholeheartedly. I, I've known that, you know, I watched the footage back and that's, you know, he pushed too far, the wheels looked locked and he pushed Hamilton onto the wet grass and that's it, caused carnage. Even Grosjean's admitted that. What's raged me more than anything is the penalty he got. A race ban. It was a racing incident. It was He didn't think, oh, I'm just going to push Hamilton off the track and cause carnage. He was just racing. And I know Vicky uh, will not like me saying this, but Maldonado has caused some accidents and he's got a penalty. Yeah, that's fine, it's a do. But he's always got grid drops. He's never been banned. You know, even Bruno Senna has caused a few. And, you know, okay, not as big as that one. That was probably the biggest one we've seen all year, but a ban, a race ban. I just think the FIA are, uh, in the words of Lewis Hamilton, <laughs> Freaking ridiculous. Literally, they can't get anything consistent. I'm surprised they could, uh, you know, even do, um, they're worse than a chocolate fire guard. They literally, oh, I'm so angry. I'm literally so angry at that penalty. You know, oh, why race ban? The, you know, I know Grosjean's had a lot of first corner incidents. I know that. I know he's had a lot of first corner incidents. But they weren't all his fault. So I don't understand, you know, why a ban? You know, we live in a society where, you know, we don't need to ban drivers anymore. We shouldn't have to black flag drivers anymore. So why, oh why do we have a ban? Literally, as Vicky said on Twitter, um, or F1 Obsessive, just is from Romain. I will literally wear that badge with pride at Monza because I am absolutely devastated. I'm literally devastated that I can't go and watch the race next weekend without a giraffe. I mean, who am I going to support? I've literally run out of people to support. Pretty damn gutted. That's all I'm saying. I'm pretty damn gutted. And the FIA coming to get you. Coming to get you. Oh, I'm so angry. Question three. Twitter controversy has been another headline for F1 this weekend with Lewis Hamilton's disappearing tweets. What do I make of the incident and the way in which it's been reported on? I only knew about... Oh, I do apologise, I've just lost my signal. Um, I only knew about the Twitter thing literally on race day because I haven't been on Twitter when... Just a story is, uh, my boyfriend lives away and the only time we can see each other is the weekend so we both watch Grand Prix together but I don't tend to go on Facebook and Twitter or anything so I do, I do miss a few things and stuff like that. So, um, yeah... 
I have been on Twitter, so when I I obviously heard about, oh, you know, Whit Marshall's like, what about these disappearing tweets and stuff? So, But obviously I know now that basically he gave out sensitive information and basically was just being a whinging moan bag. Um, what do I think of them? It's his own personal account. It's his choice. To be honest, he, he, got, he gained 20,000 followers in a day because he says what he thinks and as much as he's not my favourite person... I love him for the fact he's that literally that thick that he thinks that's a good move. You know, <laughs> he's, just, he's freaking ridiculous. He makes my whole day because I'm just like, do you know what should be played when Lewis Hampton's around? The Benny Hill theme music because he literally is so stupid at times. But to be honest, I don't care about it. I think let them, let them drive and say what they want. It's more news for us, it's more interesting for us, and to be honest, uh, Notorious Ham can keep doing it for all I care, because uh, that's just good, that's just good F1. True story. Last question, bonus question. Jensen Button started off the second part of the season with his winning spa. Do you think this is his catalyst to ignite the battle for the title, or will he drop off in a similar fashion? Now, we say this, oh, they've won, so it's the start of their up climb. With this season... You can't say that because look at Alonso. He's won three wins, but they've never been really pretty much off the back of each other. Not really. They've always been a gap, and it's the same with Jensen's. Same with Webber's. Uh, Webber's was Monaco in Britain, and you know the, the different tracks. And like I said, like a few years ago, that would have been like always the start of his uphill climb. Jensen Button is notoriously always better in the last half of the season. He always has been, even in his Honda days. Because I remember, I think the 2006, um, Jensen actually scored more points in the last six races than the champion Alonso did. So, yes, I do think it's a little bit of his up climb, but he's just, I think, it's not an impossibility they can win the title. But I think he, unless something tragic happens... I think it's fairly safe to say 2012 is not Jensen's year. So I'd, I would like to see an up climb because I love Jensen and I think he's a lovely bloke. But with this season being how it is and the wind's being so far spread out, you know, it's like, it's a bit like, you know, it's like Alonso, Hamilton, Weber, Button. And it'd be like, you know, and then it, you've had the random ones like Perez and Maldonado, not Perez, Maldonado and, you know, Rosberg and... And I still think Lotus have a win in them. But there's so many tracks coming up. You know, we've got a new track no one's been to. We've got Austin. We've got, you know, Japan. And you've got... You know, you've just got loads of tracks where some cars are more suited to them. And I just think, as much as Jensen is a great driver and he will still consistently win this year, I just think it's not necessarily means he's going to win every race and win the title. I think he will win some races, but I think... This is not the uprise, really, of Jensen Button. So, yeah, uh, that's my fan formula for this week. Um, I do apologise, because, you know, it's nearly 8 o'clock in the morning here and I'm exhausted. But, yeah, I just want to say, like, you know, thank you for all, be- all your fan formulas for being really nice to me while I've been away. And uh, this week it is Monza. And I'm in Birmingham. In the- I'm in the F1 in pubs. So, uh, yeah, and there's quite a few of us on Twitter going in from Fun Fun Formula. So, I'm sure uh, you'll see my tweets that weekend. And uh, as well, I'll be doing a nice blog post about uh, the Fun Formula F1 in Pumps Meetup. So, yeah, uh, basically, I will see any of you lot then. And to everyone else, have a lovely week. And I'll speak to you next week. So, bye.